I'm my own man. No family, no country. You truly are my bastard. The gods, they have a plan for you. Bring the country together. It's your destiny. I really want to hear from the two of you. What has been the most thrilling part about bringing this series to life? I, I guess it's the world in a way because, um, well, actually, there's so many. It, where do you start with this one? Because obviously there's the adaptation itself. But I'm sure Julie will talk a bit about that. So, but, but I think from the point of view of realizing the world, it was, you know, first of all, bringing together a creative team um, that will take the material from the page of the scripts um, to the bigger screen. Um, so it was something we spent a lot of time um, working on with the team, starting with Otto Bathurst, who's our lead director and EP. Um, and we, you know, we realized obviously fifth century is a moment in time where there's very little uh, existing that, you know, it, you know, if you want to do something in Elizabethan time, you go to the National Portrait Gallery and you see the, the old classics from the great masters and you can get a lot of um, intel from there. So the detective work, working with Ronald Hutton, who is a professor, local professor, um, it's his area of specialism. So he is almost like a forensic detective that took us through a lot of the uh, the common mistakes that have been made in previous dramas that have been made around this time. Um, and obviously, to a certain extent, no one knows what happens. There's nothing existing. So it is all that forensic uh, detective work that leads us there. And that was working with all departments, whether it's design, whether it's costume. Um, you know, so we'd look at like a day in the life of each of the characters and work out, you know, what happens when they get up, what's the routine, do they wash their hair, do they walk, you know, so it was, yeah, really sort of fascinating and exciting to bring that world to life, to make the show feel distinctive from what's come before. And I just, I just love the Arthurian legend. Um, I studied it at university, I, I've read so many different iterations of it. And I just love the mix of, you know, the political, the big stuff, like how do you run a country? How do you unite a country? What is justice? But then everything else, all, frankly, the soap opera that comes in that story, the friendships, the betrayals, the sacrifice, the adultery. Um, it's very, very, very human. So I think, you know, you look at all that melting pot of all those themes and ideas and it's very easy to understand why this is a tale that has existed in Western culture for generations. It it offers so much. And I think, you know, the choice we had to make very early on and was long debated, which is to Lachlan's point, what is the world building of this piece? Because it's almost like doing a sci-fi show. You have to work out the rules. You have to work out you know, the rules of your period, you know, you have to work out what, you know, how grounded you are. And, you know, in all my viewings of Arthurian tales, you know, you can fall in two camps. You can either be chiffon on silk or you can be mud and bearskins. And what we are trying to do here is pull the two things together. So you've got a bit of, you know, the the kind of romance and the, and the beauty but it's also grounded. You believe those characters lived in that world. Vengeance is the way of things. Maybe the way of things has to change. We must unite the tribes. It's time for something new. For something new. I want to hear from you. What were some of the key historical points that were really important for you to keep? And then what, on the other end of that, what was really important to keep from the mythology that we hear? Otto Bathus, our lead director in EP, you know, is best known for, for setting up Peaky Blinders. And then we had Kate Brook and Ed Whitmore, you know, two glorious writers. And, you know, the debate all the way through was how much do you go blockbuster? So, you know, if if you're introducing Excalibur, what are you doing? Because you can go to the Lady in the Lake version, you can go, go to the Sword in the Stone version, or you could find it in a flea market. So in our show, where are we? And we're probably between between the flea market and the, and, and the stone. So what we did, and I think this is critical for the whole piece, is we told a very, per when, when we get to Excalibur, we'll be telling a very personal story because all the way through, we're trying to personalize, you know, these names that we're so familiar with, you know, they're so iconic, 
you know, Arthur, Guinevere, you know, in, in a season two, it would be Lancelot. We think we know these people or or we think a large part of our audience will think they know them. And you want to kind of get behind them. So with Excalibur, we're doing a little hint of magic, but we're also telling a personal story about Arthur and his relationship to his mother. So that it's it's if if you if you like the analogy, it's the continuation of we've got silk over here and we've got the mud over here and we're pulling the two things together. So it's grounded, but it's also got a little bit of the epic, the epically emotional to it, yeah. if that makes sense. The Winter King is available on MGM Plus. I'm Sari Cohen. I'll see you next time. Your plan better work, brother. Or we're all lost. It's easy to divide a country. The hard task is putting it back together.